Welcome to A-Level Chemistry. Our topic for today is NMR spectroscopy, Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Spectroscopy. So before we delve into this topic, I want you to remember that while studying for our AS level examination, we came across IR spectroscopy, which was infrared spectroscopy. There, we learned how different bonds absorb different wavelengths of infrared radiation and using those absorbances and the wave numbers, we could detect the type of bond and hence the molecule under consideration. NMR spectroscopy is another analytical technique used to detect molecules. It uses a different type of electromagnetic radiation, radio waves. So, nucleons, which are protons and neutrons, they have a property called spin. And as they spin, they have a magnetic moment around them. Now, as you can see in this picture over here, these protons are spinning and they are spinning in random directions. And this is very important to note right now because here it says no field, which means that no magnetic field has been applied. Since these protons have a magnetic field on their own as they are spinning, when we apply a large magnetic field, these protons can either align with the field, as you can see this proton, this proton and this proton, they have aligned with the field, or they can align against the field, as you can see this proton and this proton. So these are two energy states. One is aligning with the field, like here, spinning such a, uh, spinning such that it is aligned with the field with the applied field or it can spin aligned against the field now why these are two energy states i will explain to you so since the nucleons that align with the field are actually supporting that field they are act, they are, they are affected by that field in a way that the direction of the, the axis of the rotation is towards the field. They are present in this low energy state. So this is a nucleon and it's present in the low energy state because it is stable. But what if I deliver some radio frequency power pulses to this? What it does is, it absorbs these radio frequency pulses and it gains energy. And this is enough energy for it to flip. Flip from this energy state to the higher energy state. And there, it is aligned against the field. So, now I'm drawing this nucleon again. And it has it is aligned against the field. And it is at a higher energy state. And since higher energy states are more unstable, it cannot remain in this energy state for too long. So when I deliver radio, radio, wave, radio wave pulses of different frequencies, there is a particular frequency that this particular nucleon absorbs and it flips because as we know through quantum mechanics that E is equal to H times V where H is the Planck's constant and V is the frequency of the radiation. And this E is the energy of the photon. So the energy gap between these two energy states is E. We can call it delta E. And H is the Planck's constant and V is the frequency of radiation that this nucleon absorbs. So what happens when I give radio wave frequency to this? So it flips from here to here. In the, to the higher energy state and I remove giving remove those pulses I remove that uh, radio wave emitter what happens then now since I'm not giving it energy anymore it is in this unstable state and it cannot remain here because it's unstable so what it does is it flips back to its original lower energy state and in the process it releases pulses of radio wave frequency so as it flips back to here we get some pulses of radio wave frequency traveling towards the detector. 